make a Stormbrand character. side I've got all the leveling gear I will ever need now so yeah This is why I need Stormbrand, because I suck at our aiming spells. Come on, ignite. There we go. <laughs> now, I'm pretty sure you get Stormbrand pretty much start straight away, but I want indecision. Where is my helm?
There you are. Got the eight other item I needed, Ridgewall. Alright, gonna grab some ignition. Then we'll just ignite my ass through the bloody campaign and have an easy run. Hey, Dridgen, how's it going, dude? So level 12, we can use Stormbrand. Thanks for the sub, man. Appreciate it, dude. <laughs> Not too bad, uh, Slayer. Mainly spent the day just doing Warhammer painting or model painting. Uh, it's a pretty good day. Decided I wanted to make a brander, so we're gonna do that. I love that effect. Chizo really put some effort into this game. You don't realize it until you play um, campaign resets and stuff like that. There we go, nice and fast. Be tanky and fast. Act one guys are like, where the fuck did you get all this gear? Uh, Stormbrand Elementalist, man. We're gonna use my tanky ass CI template, and we're gonna make a Stormbrand character with it. In fact, I've already done that. I've got a POB sitting in front of me right now, and a non-mage blood version too. I gotta get back into the trend of um, resetting builds down to a reasonable level. Actually, level four, level four should be able to make a good flask. Should be able to get a good quicksilver flask into this, make it even faster. Thanks for the follow, enslaved. <laughs> Just throw the fireball at the tree. <laughs> That'll do the job. Yeah, I wanted to play something where I could, like, mindlessly do stuff. Like, I've min and maxed the, um, the hell out of my other character. I got it to level 98 this morning. Cheers, man. So, I got a build guide coming for, uh, Tectonic Slam as well. Just in case, you know, you got, you got the proclivity to run Tech Slam. I made it. And I made it work better and easier. Thanks for the follow, Ro. What the hell is... Oh, I get stuck between the trees. But yeah, indecision, I don't know. If, if indecision doesn't work too well, Penance Brain's always an option with this. So it'd be a really tanky Penance Brain tune. And for once, I'm not going to be using Anathema as well. Got an interesting ring that I'll be using on this one. Yeah, man. There is a guy that did run it with, uh, I think, Brutus Lead Sprinkler on the ladder. So, so there's a few people that ran it like proper, like, yeah. I only tag two thingos, so there must be a third here, unless it does its weird thing where it's like, oh, yeah, you need to do two instead of three. Should probably sell that a bit low on currency. Oh, shit. He's gonna have to come to my hideout. I'll just go to his hideout. God damn it. Hey RFB. Not too bad, man. Just a chill Sunday. Why would he come to Mud Flats? Like, you know that I don't have any gear. My 
I ripping myself off? No, it's market rate. What is this guy doing? Don't tell me rocked up. He's like, oh, now I don't have my currency on me. Oh my god! <laughs> Are you for real? Bro. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> I don't even care. That's just bad preparation. <laughs> I'll sell that for two. I'll sell it for 2.7 either way. That's just bad prep. Seriously. See, yeah, seriously. Like, you got a character that's got no portals, right? In a new area, on a new run. And you rock up without your currency and fucking mud flats like an idiot. Like, yeah, of course you gotta drop the fucking trade. What a moron. <laughs> Just, I was... <laughs> and then tell me where to go. That's one thing with trades. No. Nah. Not gonna be told where I should and shouldn't put my character. You rock up to a trade, not prepared, pre be prepared to be booted from the party. Really frustrating. Alright, let's get back to the run. I don't know, dude. It, it's like, how do you not fucking be ready when you go into a, a hoe to, with your currency? Like, it should be like a two second job. Instead, they got to go, oh, I haven't got my currency yet. I'm going to have to go rustle through my entire, like, thingo, and then find the currency, waste your time, waste their own time. It's like, fucking hell, man. Especially for, like, Delve players, where for every minute you're not down in the Delve, you're losing currency. I'm not that desperate for currency that I'm going to sit there and wait 10 years for him to organize his life. Like, I'd rather be broken having fun than waiting 20 years for a trade. It's that simple. Alright, I can use my flask, but spin through here, go back, pick up skill point. Thanks for a follow, Pumpy. I need phasing. <laughs> nah, trading in this game is bizarre. It really needs to be fixed up for PoE 2. Hopefully they add in some kind of automation to it. Where you don't have to interact with people. <laughs> and that'll alleviate that issue. Like, you just put in the thing and say, sell by a certain date. See you later. Or like, sell by indefinite date. Something like that would be really cool. So level 12 we can switch straight to Stormbrand, and then we'll run it more or less like an Ignite Brand, and then we'll switch to Crit later down the track, and just clap everything. And the reason why the Elementalist is good with this is because of Shock, we're going to scale Shock. Come on. 
Yeah, you just gotta look for that. That's part of the problem with um, all the magic find jazz. You just gotta find for new and interesting ways to play the game. I find like that tends to be my go-to. Can I get frostblink? Let's see if I can get frostblink. Probably be like ten div now. Alright, let's see if this one knows how to trade. Oh! Is he ready? No, he's not ready. I don't know what frustrates me so much these days, but far out. Alright. Now I should have a quick silver that I can use, which is this one. I can use that shield, which I prefer. Which rolls better 21, 25, that's a better roll. So I need Frost Blink of Wintry Blast. Ideally just... Holy shit, it's 99 Chaos for a friggin' level 1. I'm okay with level 1. 6.5. It's 140 Chaos for this gem. That's absurd. Uh, you got to be below uh, depth one thirty. Trades are a nightmare. Is he going to come to his hideout? There we go. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I, I was ready for the trade before I rocked up to this guy's hoe. Like, fucking hell. He's got to double check all the currency, right? He's got to go by one by one and go, yep, that's a stack of 20. That's also a stack of 20. Oh, and he still didn't trade. Oh man, I'm getting like exponentially tilted by trading as of late. I don't know why. I did try that build at one point, and I don't know, man. I, it, it didn't, it didn't scream to me. We should start a, we should start a thing where we're just like, let's see how long it takes for this guy to figure out how to trade. <laughs> We could level whip Frost Blink of Wintry Blast, actually. Yeah, man. There's so much dicking around in PC, it's unreal. Like, people are just really lethargic when it comes to trading. I wouldn't mind going, uh, like, Ignite, Wintry Blast, Ignite build. It's a really cool skill now. Still looking for a reason to use it right now. It shouldn't be. Would be behooving me to get that. 
really need that, but I'll take it anyway. Yeah, man, I wanted an easy build on my hands. Like, I love tendies, but I've got to hold the button. <laughs> and the other build's like two buttons, but two buttons is not one button. So if I can fully automate builds, that's where my headspace is at. Because I'm lazy. Yeah, man, that's the key, dude. Immortality. But that's awesome, dude. That, like, Divine Eye, if you literally switch out two gems in my final tendies tree, you can, um, you can make it pretty damn, like, ridiculously bloody powerful. It's not as powerful as tendies, but it's a fun build. But I know what I'll be farming out of lab next league if you need easy currency on League Start. Bloody, uh, winter, um, frost blank of wintry blast. The, uh, the storm, the, um, thingamajig character, HP tree, man. If you have a look at my incinerate build, follow the HP tree. You just hold the button down and blast, yeah. I think I was the only one that figured out Divine Eye this league, actually. Everyone tried to play it on freaking totems, like usual. You just go Koblamo. Oh man, I love leveling gear. You should be allowed to have like one leveling gear item every league. So if I have my preference, it would definitely be ridge boards. Like every league, they give you ridge boards for free just to level up. It's not a bad idea, actually. Ignition Frostblink Totems. Ooh, that's a good idea, actually. Because we could play that on the Elementalist. Oh, <laughs> maybe. Maybe an option. That's actually not a terrible idea. Oh, really? Were they Ignite, though? Were they normal, like, lame Frost Blink? <laughs> Not enough Ignite. I haven't actually played a dot build this league, so... So we want this point up here, so we can get more mana regen. That's insane. That'll get no- you know that- you know that they'll- they'll absolutely destroy Magic Fine for next league now, like they're not gonna let, it, let us have that much power. And then on beyond that, they're just gonna go through and just like nerf the living blazes out of like Penance Brand and Dissipation and everything. They're like, 
They're gonna be like, no power for you guys. Get out of here. Like. That's insane how expensive that is. Exactly, fun is always temporary until we come up with a new way to abuse the shit out of the game. <laughs> Say hello to my ignites. Thanks for the follow, Divinity. But the thing is, like, what that means is lab farming is a profitable, like, yeah, you can make some serious money out of lab farming. I might actually do, like, a test on that to see, you know, how many, I, I might get my, um, tech slam character and just blast through lab. Totems. Oh, I guess that was a big thing, eh? Caustic, caustic arrow totems. Ideas for next league start. We start planning for next league early. Wouldn't be bad to do a league start guide for that actually. I'm not picking up that fusing, I gotta walk all the way over there, I don't think so. Yeah, I know, right? It was, it was the same on the Tendies build. Like, one minute Vile Bastion was dirt cheap. Next minute, it was like 20 div for friggin' I, uh, Vile Bastion. Forbidden Flame, Forbidden Fleshes. Same with the Watcher's Eye. Like, it went through the damn roof. But I guess, like, that's the thing with this game. Like, the it's got a very, very, like, hefty streamer community and everything like that, so... Not necessarily a bad thing, but it, it is when it comes down to market pressures. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was... I think, I think it's good though, like, you know, at, at least like there's new builds to play. Um, next league the prices will probably come down. Part of the inflation, part of it is due to the, the league inflation. Like, Magic Fine is really fuck the league up badly i think i saw a post from a few other bigger streamers where they're like you know it was fun at the start now it's just like okay this is this is bullshit now like it's devalued everything and it actually makes it really hard to start other builds because it's just screwed the market up
yeah, pretty much. It's just, it shouldn't be like that. So, hopefully they take some lessons from this and they don't irk the league too much like that. But I think we're like, what, one league away from them having a big, like, uh, open or beta for PoE2. So, God only knows what's going to happen in the next few months. And actually, we got something else to be excited about for uh, February as well, which is a few weeks away, is um, Last Epoch 1.0. Yeah, so then we got one more league in between now and then. I'm I'm really hoping that like well I already played the game at ExileCon and it was great, so I'm really fucking excited for that. I'm gonna take like two weeks off or a week off in June for that. That's before uh, hopefully it's not on like 30 June or something crap like that where it's like financial year cutover because I won't be able to take time off, but yeah, I'll be full-time streaming for the week I take off when that comes out. Yeah, I actually really like Last Epoch now. I think it's a great game. Like, the, the skills in Last Epoch, to give you guys a bit of an optic, they feel like what PoE 2 feels like. So, like, the big, like, comet from the sky sort of stuff, like, that all feels like PoE 2. No, it, that's the thing. It's it's not slow. The, what they showed in the... So what they showed at ExileCon was not accurate. Because they were like... They were like playing Act 4 with two Link skills. Like, it was never going to work. Why did you go my heart? Once you, once you started to kit stuff out, god damn it, once you started to kit stuff out, it actually started to get really, like, chippy, like, like, it was, it was like, fast. Like, I, I played the Sork with Ark, right, and it felt like the power sort of felt reset back to when the game first came out, so it wasn't like you didn't need billions of DPS to, or millions of DPS to feel strong, it was like how the game used to feel, which is really good. Well, the, the thing is, like, the, the melee, right? Where they're like, oh, test the melee. All they were testing was uh, the mechanical around it, right? So, the actual melee skills, when you had a look at, like... Because I tested the warrior, right? I really like the warrior. Um, when you test the melee skills out, right? They were, like, two links. So, they were fighting Act 4 bosses on two link setups. And in some cases, one link setups. So, like, straight away, like, that was would have been under level for what you're trying to verse the enemy you're trying to verse thanks for the follow okay that was the problem that was the problem with what they showed like they didn't show any actual builds they just showed like two link setups and all they were going for was like the synergy between the skills not less so the actual like you know how it plays but what I'm actually thinking is in PoE 2, it's going to be much easier, much simpler to get builds to work. I don't think it's going to be as complex as what PoE 1 is initially. And they sort of have to do that to make it a little bit better for new players. Because that's one thing that Last Epoch actually does really good. Almost everything in the game scales well and it's playable. Yeah, man, clear the primevals. You're in the primevals. You can have like golem, um, golem jewels drop. The other thing that can, which aren't necessarily worth too much, but the minimum ones like fifteen and twenty C with one div for like um, the red one, an animus stone. Um, and the other thing is primeval uh, azurite caches can give you like up to like twelve to fifteen thousand azurite, which is equal to like one div worth of resonators hey driz yeah i think that i think the if i try and like i've thought about this a fair bit since exilecon right so <laughs> i think the idea was to show us the tech it wasn't so much to show us builds 
And what's really funny, so if this gives you guys any security rights, so I played Sork, right? I really like Sork. Sork is fucking awesome. So I actually did what they told you that, oh, they weren't intending to write. I made a one button build out of the out of it in my play test because like I was there to test shit. And um and it worked. I was running around just one tap and arc and destroying everything. And actually with like the way the Arctic armor interactions work and everything in PoE2, it was a lot more powerful than if you were to play it in PoE1. And then obviously like you had like the stave with like the slap it on the ground and power the shot up and then go boom. Like it was awesome. I like it. Is it really 16 div, man? We're going to be back in Delve, Farm and Delve this, this weekend. Or this week. No, you don't need four main skills. You, you can have four main skills. But what I ended up doing is running like a four link on, um, on Ark. And it was super powerful. Like, I didn't have any issues with it. So I think it's like they've, they've sold it in one direction trying to like set expectations but at the same time like the game still plays like how it always did. Alright we got... That's not bad actually. Yeah, man. Delve's awesome. Always recommend Delve. Does not appear to be proccing ignites. Is it? No, it's just proccing shock. That's okay. I don't mind this. This is good for clear. Get to like up to maximum shock. Yep. Gonna use my template and um and then see if we can make a storm brand build. And so far it feels pretty good. Definitely a lot less egregious on your hands. Just gonna abuse shock as much as I can. So we'll add added lightning to this, I think. Doesn't seem too juicy on the mana cost either. You should be okay. Like there was someone who got a uh, got down to like a thousand last league with that build, so it's not impossible to do. So I'm gonna go and yeah, this is the storm brand of indecision. Added lightning instead of combustion. Added crit. Don't really need prolif yet. Arcane surge. Here we got Arcane Surge in it. Let's run it on a 4 link for now. So I don't destroy it. And we can probably put Added Cold as well, just for good measure. Yeah, that'll work pretty well too. There's so many ways to play Bill. Like, you could run this on Inquisitor, but then the Shock's not as strong. Like, it doesn't feel bad at all. Oh, really? Yeah, well, I guess because the energy shield stacking, eh? It's a really cool skill, though. Like, look at that shit. Just tearing it up. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, because of energy, sh uh, energy blade.
so I think I'll still use focused on this build. I've got it up to like 4.4 mil and I think you can have, still have two brands attached to an enemy. Seems to just move around enemies a lot faster, which isn't bad from a clear perspective. This could be really good in Delve or really shit. But this won't be Energy Blade, this will just be Wand. Because I'm basic like that. <laughs> Alright, uh, we don't need anything else. We got pretty much everything I need. Now, I should have... Nah, not yet, man. I'm making the POB as we speak. Doesn't exist. Will soon. Um, intuitive leak. I didn't think I used that in any other build to sleep. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Aha. Right. Arguably, you could league start with this too, if it works. So I can have, what, three brains on him? Something like that. In the past, I sort of steered clear of brand characters because they weren't very tanky, but now with this template, I can make pretty much anything god tier tanky. You run every spell in the game. And it's easy on your hands too, because you don't have to bloody sit there and go blah, 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 and hit every button on this on the bloody thing. I might even try and like do it without Forbidden Flesh and Forbidden Flame, just make it super powerful, max it out with crit, like get like triple crit multi jewels into it. Yeah, there's quite a number of, um, of mana stacking builds this league. But it's too expensive. Thank Connor for that one. <laughs> Yeah, man. Playing Storm Brand of Indecision. If I ran a health base setup, I could actually run impulses, but nah. got blast to do it, deal with that. Thanks for the resub, dude. Um, not sure what the prices are, but you could go for the power, um, the power charge version. Gives you bigger AOE and more power charges, which is going to increase your damage. Uh, it's off the Occultist Ascendancy. A lot of the witch um, 
ascendancy forbidden fleshes and whatever tend to be very expensive because the utility on the witch is just ridiculous now nah, this would be non mage blood I want to use the belt that drops off maven and convert the charges into was uh, whatever they're called charges so yeah it'll be a cheaper build And then I'll do a and then I'll do a mage blood version. That's god tier. Realistically, this should be able to run in delve uh, to like 350 no sweat. Actually, this should be a super easy 350 delver. Make it able to face tank um, thingo. Hell yeah, man! Oh, okay. Well, yeah, scratch that. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Which just be good. Never used to be a big fan of the witch until, yeah, I just started playing all elementalist builds because they're amazing. Uh, Chieftain's probably going to be better if you've got the currency. Ascendant's going to be more achievable. I tried Chieftain though, and I didn't really like the feel of it. So yeah, do with that what you will. Shit. Sucks getting old. Cool. Um, yeah, just have a look at the cost of it though. It, it Like I tried to start getting armor stacking working and it was just expensive as hell to the point where I was like, nah, bugger this, I can't be stuffed. Uh, what level am I? 15? That was a really fast run. Switch to Belt of the East Deceiver eventually. On the last time, uh, useful to me. That is, though.
Yep. The weird thing is, like, Delve's always been like that. It's just, it's an amplification of what usually happens, because Doriani's always goes up in price. <clears throat> but, yeah, it's interesting. Crowns of the Tyrants are going through the roof. That's it, man. It's got a, it's still got a good, like, it's got a reasonable player count in it, but it's not like other mechanics. Which is good and bad in, in a couple of respects. And that, but it all always points to it's a necessity and other players need Delve players, and that's why they'll pay huge sums to get what comes out of Delve. So we've got to get the power charge nodes and then we'll get the, the brand nodes and then yeah. Not gonna need that belt. String of servitude will keep me going for a while. I don't mind this build actually. It's got good clear. Yeah, it is. Like, if this doesn't work, it's just going to be slap pen and spray on and that'll do the job. But this will work. Interested to see what happens with the um, AoE on this, with Convergence. Hey, dude. Ah, uh, not much, man. Just Sunday night, so back to work in the morning. Usual shit. That should be a pretty good weekend this weekend. What I like about this, it just sort of blazes through enemies like they're nothing. Yeah, that's the plus side of it, man. I tried to have a look at that build yesterday as well, and yeah, it's very much brick to shit. Like, Totems are just not, slam totems are just not really playable anymore since they changed the chieftain. <clears throat> oh yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. 
Yay. It really is. There's probably a way to play it on like a trigger setup or something like Arcanus brand Vortex Totems or Cast on Crit or something, but yeah, it's just too hard to... I don't, I don't really want to figure it out at this stage. Yeah, man. I'm on 900 and something with, um, Tendies. Tendies is powerful. This is crazy build. What I like about this build, one button. Lazy man's build. Now this is leveling. <laughs> you probably could. There'd probably be a way. Oh, not manifold are there. Need some MTX on this, I think.
got way too many MPXs. Yeah, where's the goblins? There they are. Gotta have my little goblin bros. Oh, it automatically changes your shield. That's pretty cool. I like that. Yeah, I know. It's awesome. I didn't realize that happens with Sun Prism when you put it on Herald of Ice. That's pretty cool. Oh yeah. We got some cool MTXs in this game. Like they're expensive, but at least they're good. I want to go back and do your oak. Usually it's like where this is and you just follow it up. Yeah. Man, wolves are too powerful. Yep. Hardest boss in the game cleared. Oh, yeah.
It's because of your name, alright? <laughs> You're like, yeah, divine. Knew it. I fucking knew it. So I think 36 I can use a Relicash, and I have like many pairs of Relicash for this league. I reckon. Where's the Ubers? Let's just go smash some Ubers. <laughs> Level 21 Ubers. Here we come. Actually, you could play this pretty well with Poison on the Pathfinder. Now, usually the spiders are not on the same side. There they are. Random fruit generator, eh? That's actually a pretty good fucking way to name characters. <laughs> I'm gonna remember that. You call my character Tomato Avocado. I'm feeling like there's going to be an early Azaro kill here. No, you got to stand in the sigil of power and just keep cast and hold down the cast button, man. Should be gaining stages as you cast. Because it reacts to you casting mana within the sigil. If your cast speed isn't over like 12, it'll be a bit slower. Yeah, that instantly dropped that. Huh? Yeah, it should, well, it should. You should have a mana cost to it. You need it to have a mana cost, because if it doesn't, you won't be able to proc it. Inspirations, the next setup. Probably run that for a little bit. No mana cost is bad. No mana cost means you can't proc some of the stuff you needed to proc. Actually, let's just go get a Kikazu ring. And then I'll be immortal. Yeah, that's okay. As long as as long as it's only costing four mana, then yeah, you should be able to charge up. <laughs> yeah, man, I've I've earned that much currency this league from delving. It's just like 
whatever. If I have something go up for like a few div, then yeah, I'll go out and sell it, but until then, no. Nah. Cruelty really doesn't do anything for this build. Man, this is just a full track list of Vo v VOE tonight. Not complaining, though. So more charges equals more damage. Actually. More power. Those little goblins is running around. Should still have one of my old ones actually. <laughs> Get wrecked. Hey, P, how's it going, dude? That's two points.
Oh yeah? He's gonna have to get some better gear. <laughs> Alright, we need that. Gotta go to Act 1 and pick up my other skill point. Oh, can I get Swift Brand actually? Thirty one, I can use that, so I'm a little ways away. Fence, or we can go for brands. There we go. Yeah, I've got a 55 inch screen above all my, my three screens. So yeah, I um I have a pretty hectic setup. <laughs> When I moved into my new house, I just wanted a, the craziest setup I could get, so. So I have like my part of building up here as I play while I'm on stream. This screen is like audio and stuff like that. This other screen here is like stream. So like it's uh, OBS and whatever, Streamlabs. I never usually have an issue with it. I, I just hold the button down and it charges up. Find a way to juice your mana cost up. That'll fix it. You should be able to sustain it with um, Mastermind Discord. Where it's good is like sustaining longer boss fights, but not if you're running around maps or anything like that. Yeah, like low level inspiration is going to be an advantage to you. That was really easy. I'm gonna be taking a Zara at level 24. Open the door! That door should just instantly open. Uh, not sure what they're worth now, man. I, I had them so long ago. I'll be able to tell you when I do this build, because there's a couple that are the same. 
The infusion ones you can craft yourself easily enough to be honest with you. You just need the base channeling um, cluster. And they're expensive. Cluster jewels are expensive this league, but not if you self-craft them. And they're pretty easy. You just basically chaos spam or whatever until you get the right roll. Well, it wasn't that price when I made the build. <laughs> it went up because of the build. Tendies may have drove the price up. Yeah, man. If you can craft it, you make a ton of money. That's why I play uh, Delirium. Uh, use a different base. That'll just be people abusing it for currency. Realistically, you don't need a profane one. You can do it with a different base. Pretty much most things that drop off Crystal King, I got a net you return to cover the cost. I can't believe how expensive tyrants are though, like that's insane. I don't think there's any benefit to casting more brands with this one. I think attachment range is going to be better. Never used to use Arcane Surgeons of this league. Because I want to play Stormbred. <laughs> Everybody else is playing Penance Brand. Nobody's playing Stormbred. Like, yeah, Penance Brand would be OP, but also Stormbred Brand could be OP as well. And also, let, let have a think about it, right? So, everybody's playing Penance Brand. What do you think TGG is going to do to Penance Brand next league? They're going to nerf it. But they're not going to nerf Stormbreed. So if I do a build guide for Stormbreed, I thought about it.
but her damage is too low. Just doesn't hold up versus other brain skills. Never play builds, so this is one thing that one of the reasons why I play so many off metas and stuff like that, and why my builds don't tend to get target nerfed. Um, never play builds that absolutely everybody plays in the meta, because that means you could either play that build for multiple leagues without any concern, or um, you could be ahead of the next league, because you may play a build that is yet to get nerfed, and if you can make a bad skill powerful, it gets more powerful when it hits the next league, i.e. Incineration, where Incinerate got more powerful this league. Wintertide would be really good as well. That would work really well on the Occultus. Also, it takes more skill to play more difficult builds that don't scale as easy. So you get better at the game when you play skills that aren't straight, uh, straightforward to balance. Or that don't auto-scale for you. Otherwise, there's no challenge in the game. That's why my builds are usually pretty hardline um, tanky and work, because I play a lot of shit that nobody else is playing. And then I figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Man, Cleave of Rage is pretty OP this league, though. Also, I really like this brain. Hey, Avenger. Just gonna antagonize him to his face. I probably should put quality on that. Now, if you thought I did a lot of damage before, oh shit, we're gonna do damage. You probably could do a conversion for like Penance Brain to Chaos, which that's what's happening now. You can do poison on it with it. There's a way to play Wild Strike, I did it a few leagues ago. It's just really expensive. A lot of melee skills don't really scale too well either. I don't even need the wolves to carry me up. Penis, um, this brand is really strong. Yeah, it does. And even when you like, you put it on, um, what was it, Crystallized Omniscience, which is how you get it working, it doesn't feel good. Yeah, so I'd say this is pretty strong. 
especially for leveling. Seems to be destroying everything, so yeah. Yeah, it is. It's the uh, storm brand of indecision. It's quite good. Look at this guy running away. How dare you? Die. <laughs> He's like, no, 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 no. I don't want to die. Oh, yeah, that's shit. back up here and grab the high voltage nodes maybe actually this would work too not really we already have like max chance to shock anyway I haven't even got swift brand in this that's level 31 swift brand this should absolutely rip face This is with a shit one. Might chuck an obliteration one on it just for the shits and giggles and see what that looks like when I get to level, get the high enough level. Yeah, that's pretty strong. Gunning for those items. I think it was the other way, actually. 
actually. Nope, I went the right way for once. Four levels and we get Swift Brand. That wouldn't be bad either if I had an intention to run it with chill, but... Oh, I can use Valaco sign at level 38. Nice. This is much easier on the hands of this build. One click every now and again and everything just dies. Yeah, it's got um, on-the-fly WASD switching. If you have a look at the footage for the Mercenary that they put out at League Start. I reckon it would be pretty cool. Two levels away from Swift Brand. Really like this build actually. Durum! Just insta kill and shit. My wolves don't even need to spawn. Wolves are necessary. Got that bullshit. <laughs> Yeah, so you'll be able to do uh, WASD hot switch and then basically, yeah. And they said it'll work on any build as well. Like, I've never been a fan of WASD, but if you want to, you can play it like a third person uh, top down shooter, like alien shooter sort of thing. Which is pretty cool for like bow builds. Yeah, I think it's going to be a pretty interesting game. Like, I'm all for it.
As long as I can still play builds like this, I got no issues. And I'm pretty sure I will be able to. It looks slow, but it's not. So what they showed so far is like Act 4 tops and maybe Act 5 on 2 link skills. They haven't shown any actual build progression or anything like that. I feel like it's intentional, but I feel like they they never get this right. Like, they just don't seem to understand their audience as, as well as they should. So, you very much will be able to play fast builds. Yeah, exactly. Like, no, nobody's going to play like that. Like, they, th they will play like that. And this is the problem. They make the game for themselves. Which is, you know, I can understand that, but at the same time, why keep trying to pedal that? Exactly, we want to see crazy levels of power. Just like, face melting, like, nuclear meteors hitting the screen sort of shit. Like, be like, alright, that's gonna be cool. Like, and the thing is, like, like this game, they'll give us the tools to absolutely break the game anyway, so it won't make any difference at the end of the day. We'll get in there, figure out some crazy combos, and just absolutely shit on the game. I will say this, we'll have to get used to like 100,000 DPS being the, the like the high end level of power in the game, which will be sort of good, because the power creep will be gone. Done with the days of multi-million DPS. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's the whole point of it. Making entertaining builds that are just absolutely absurd. And I reckon we'll get plenty of that. I'm keen for the, um, for the Templar, actually, because I reckon I'll be able to make... Um, I reckon they're going to have damage reflect. So they have deflection and reflection. Uh, and redirection, I reckon we'll be able to make Thorns builds, and I am all for Thorns builds. Because there'll be Flails in the game too, so Flails and Thorns, big shields and fucking heavy armor is going to be my way of play. So Templar is probably going to be a Jorgen class. Oh man. Better hope for 150 div. <laughs> It'd be interesting to see if they release like POV tools and stuff like that initially. Well, I feel like they'd be really good marketing if they released a um, path of building. Yeah, they had someone dev up a path of building system for them early and then release it early so people can actually plan builds. But knowing them, they'll be like, oh, you're going to have to discover it. Oh, the best thing is like where you like tap the... You, so you have skills built into your items now in PoE 2. So there's one where you can like power up your skills in, on like staves, for example. And so, yeah, you can, like, bang the stave on the ground and basically does, like, a super-powered shot. So, like, a meteor or whatever shot and then it's, like, jacks of power up through the roof. That stuff is awesome. That can, I can work with that. Like, there's going to be some really cool shit in the game. I'm probably never going to play Monk. Monk's not, not going to be my playstyle, but Warrior and Sork, definitely. And Templar. Templar is going to be the first one I try.
Yeah, what are we switching out? Probably power. I don't know. Oh yeah, that's way more power. Yeah, I think they will. But we'll see, like, they got a reputation for making pretty hardline games, so... It's sort of what their game is about. Oh, this is instantly wipes everything. I don't even have Rune Binder yet. <laughs> yeah, I reckon. I actually have the so they were selling these ridiculously awesome mouse mats at um at Exilecon. So I've got the um the warrior mouse pad that covers my whole desk. It's friggin' awesome, I love it. I spent like four hundred dollars on merch at Exilecon. I've got Chaos Orb socks. <laughs> it's great. Living the dream. Yeah, it's even more ironic. I'm an accountant with Chaos Orb socks. <laughs> I'm like, lol. Come on, Piety. Time to die. Yeah, right. This build's nuts. It's going to abuse shock. That'd be a little weird, just saying, just a teeny bit weird. Not too weird, but enough. Then we do up to 65% shock. Hey Dwight, just smashing through playing Stormbrand of Indecision. It's pretty powerful. I got a fair few shirts I haven't even taken out of the packaging yet. And I got the PoE2 hoodie as well, which is unbelievably comfortable. Their hoodies are fucking awesome. Like, if you're gonna buy anything off them, hoodies. Woo! They're like, inner fleece lined. Oh, that's so comfortable. Can't wait for winter. We don't get a lot of winter here in Australia, so... Right in north, in the north. Yeah, they're good, they're decent, they're worth the money. It's expensive ass hoodie, but it's really cool to have a Path of Exile 2 hoodie, because I'll be wearing it when PoE 2 comes out. Oh yeah? You know there's, uh, there's the Gloves of Dissipation um, that drop an Uber Shaper, right? And you could play Spell, uh, spell Impale with it, like they amp up Spell Impale. Just saying, really good on a um, Vortex build. They were worth like 4 or 5 div, but they could be worth it. They could make a really cool build.
I'm really enjoying this build. This is so easy on my hands. Like, I can't tell you how good this is on your hands. Drop brand, sit there, watch enemy die, run away. Oh yeah? They're all good hoodies. Their shirts are a bit... But... I don't know. <sighs> I really like having Peewee merch actually. Like, I don't spend any money on any other games anymore. I just play Peewee. <laughs> That's all I do. <laughs> Only game I really play. I thought about playing other games the other day. I was like, oh, I don't know. But I will play Last Epoch. And TQ2. Hands down, I'm in for TQ2. Brand builds are pretty good, but I didn't want to play Penance Brand Dissipation because it's boring. Yeah, they're okay. They're not terrible. I feel like different ones you buy too, or, or like if you buy the current version, the shirts are pretty decent. The shirts they were giving away at Exile, as part of Exile, Exile Con, they're okay for a few days, and then yeah, they get a bit shitty, but. Dude, I am so keen for TQ2. I was actually going to send an email to the um, to the devs and see if I can get some bite on whether or not I could get early access to the game or something like that. Be like, hey, I'll do it for free. I was going to do it for free anyway, but just so I could like trial it out and have some stuff to put up for people to be able to see what it's like and so I could trial it out because I'm super keen for TQ2 so if there's anyone watching that works for the devs for TQ2 reach out to me <laughs> same here man I never I never thought it would ever happen and then bam TQ2 and it's like holy shit TQ1 was an amazing game like, there's shit in this game, there's shit in, like, Diablo, everything that uses elements of TQ1. TQ1 was just amazing. I never got into Grim Dawn a lot. I didn't really like Grim Dawn too much, but TQ1, TQ1 was where it was at. Like, relics were insane. Yeah, multi-class system. I still remember this guy we, uh, we ran into in a random, like, server. And, like... He just like geared us up with like full set uniques and everything and it's like they have set uniques but they weren't like um that overpowered shit from Path of Exile uh not Path of Exile uh from Diablo 3. It was like actual uniques that gave you like unique abilities and stuff if they were setted together, not like you know, here's three hundred thousand percent extra damage or whatever bullshit. Yeah, exactly. And they were one of the first games where you could actually see... So, it wasn't like you put it on and it looks like generic gear. You could actually see the unique on your character. Like, the... So, what they're doing in POE 2, right, is exactly what was done in TQ1 going back yonks yonks, like 15 or 10 years ago or whatever it was. That's how it worked. That's why it was so cool, because you could kit your character out with uniques and it would actually look like your character was rolling with unique gear. Exactly. It's so cool. Like, it was just such a good game. Like, it's so underrated now. Like, and like, now that you play it now, it's dated and it feels grindy. But it was a great game. Like, so if they get TQ2 anywhere even closely resembling TQ1, I'm all for it. Hands down. What was I? Oh yeah, they've got to get a Vlacos.
I've actually really gotten accustomed to scaling Shock now. Shock is a really good attribute. Uh, Tendrils and Divine Eye are so far. And even my Tech Slam can hit like 400 depth without too much hassle. Tendrils that are at 910 depth will go to 1000. And this one, if it's sort of the same, probably would hit, hit like six to 700. What's that? No rest for the wicked. I haven't seen that. Is that another game that's set to come out? Yeah. There's a lot of really cool games. And you know what's really funny? Is that, like, with, like, um, Baldur's Gate 3, AAA Studios are not the ones making all these new games anymore. I might suss that out. Like, dawn of the days where AAA studios make good games. They don't. They just don't. Why would he not use the trade system for this? Uh, this guy... He's playing minion build. It's one div, bro. Come on. Like, you can't be this slow. There we go. All right. Oh, like, what was that one that came out where it was like fucking less than like a hundred players or something played it on release or whatever? And they played it up to be using, like, Cry Crytek Engine or whatever it was. It was like an action RPG. Can't remember. I can't even remember its name. That's how unmemorable it was. Nobody... Wa or, um... That, uh... Was it Alvium? That Magic of Al Alvium whatever game or something like that? Nobody played it. It was a flop. Because they, they release a game that there's no fucking market for. Like, of course nobody's gonna play it. Yeah, Immortals of Avium. Yeah, that's it. it. It's it. Nobody wants to play that stuff, and they're like peddling it as oh, it's going to be this great game. No, it's not. It's not going to be a great game. You're making a game for literally nobody. Like, because the other like the worst thing about it is like they go and cast these ridiculous actors in it. Right, number one, nobody cares about actors being in video games. Let's be real. And number two, like, they're going to make crappy mechanics and data graphics or, and or not even data graphics, just bad gameplay. Like, nobody's going to play that. I think, um, I think what's happening in the gaming industry is gamers are really putting their money where their mouth is. And it's starting to really hurt some of these developers that aren't taking note of that. Which is good. That's how it should be. Like, as the second I see a game with politics in it, done. Straight away, not interested. Will not play a game where I'm getting, you know, some crap about some politics or whatever. Nah. Not interested. Not going to play it. Yeah, that's it. And I, I think the only way for people to really get the picture that we don't care about their bullshit is don't don't, don't give them money. Yeah, that's it. Well, you know, it's like Hollywood learning the hard way. They've lost billions of dollars in the last couple of years. Yeah, well, that's it. D4 is a great example. That game's not. That game is bad because it's not complete. It was a cash grab, and then they're like, "Oh, the art. Who cares? 
The game art means nothing if the game is bad and incomplete. Yeah, the storyline was relatively weak for a Diablo storyline. Then they just bring in, like, fan service characters because of, you know, like Mashif, for example. You know, it was a great character. But, like, he's just a side character. He's not a main character. Well, what I find really, really interesting, right? So, D4 came out, right? Now, and this is... A, I think I put a video up on this about the XP in D4 initially. Now, the thing about it is, as a dev, right? There is no way that you put an a XP grind system in that's so cumbersome and laborious on release without knowing that, right? You, you would you would QA and play test it, right? And they like increased that after like a month or whatever it was, they increased the XP gain by like double. And that's an insane prospect. So like, they're basically, they're like, they deliberately slowed the pace of their game to a snail's pace on release just so they could buy time for their like first, you know, season to come out because they released the game before seasons are ready to come out. Like, and then basically the way that they, they got around that and tried to sell it was like, oh yeah, we're, we're patching in game, more game progression to progress faster so you won't have to grind as much. Yeah, like, that's insane. You, there's no way, like, if you design a game, surely you know the pace of the game. And then they, they designed a game that had, like, the most tedious leveling system ever for ca what they essentially sold to as casual players, which is nuts. Like, and then they, then they, you know, then people got upset because the market they sold to expected you could carry your character forwards each season. Well, no, that's not how ARPGs work, but they didn't really articulate that very well. So you could say one side, oh, people expected too much and they didn't understand, but if that's the market you're catering to, you're sort of fucked up. Yeah, there's, there's no way. Like, the only, the only way that you make that mistake is those devs are so green, they have never made a game before. And you would consider for a multi-million dollar or billion dollar entity, right? that they would know better. And for the money that they charge that game for, like, I, I just, there's no, there's just no way. Like. I just think that that's crazy. Like. So yeah, I, I have a lot of real comments about the shit show that is D4. Like, they, they deserve the, they deserve everything they got coming to them. Like, they just created a bad product and then tried to mark and sting the price, so. But it, then, it, like, they've got whole builds, right? I was trying to play a bleed, um, what was it, the bleed... Thorns build? What is this guy, what is going on here? Oh man, I'm going back to farming. No? Right. I'm not gonna have a crack at, at GGG. Like, they made mistakes, yes, but at least, like, they recognize they make mistakes. This trading's getting real frustrating. I am not in the mood to sit in trade windows all night, so. Um. Like, at least they pivot when they need to pivot and they course correct, right? So that they actually listen, they go back and they go, they're, they're at least transparent enough with the community to tell you, you know, okay, we didn't do a good job on this, dot, 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 which, which is a semblance of a company that actually gives a crap. But, you know, I, I, I'm not going to be sympathetic to Blizzard. They have really stung the community bad. And I can say I'll never be buying another Blizzard game, ever. I don't care about Diablo 4's expansion. I don't want anything to do with it. And to be honest with you, other indie devs like Last Epoch and all the rest, doing a much better job. 
Like, Last Epoch's an amazing game. For a $50 price point of AUD, it's worth the money. I would say it's worth the money now. Like, there's, there's so many good mechanics in the game. Graphically, it's looking good. Like, you know, it's everything that you would want out of an ARPG. And then some. It, it, in some ways, there's better mechanics than PoE. Well, they did in the end, didn't they? They pretty much backpedaled off that. Like, but they, they had a few, like, it's not their only bad league, right? They, they had a few bad leagues before that as well. There was the, just the complete nerf league a few times over. So, like, they've always had, you're not, you're not bound to win 100% of the time. But, you know, at least look at the game we have now, to this day, the last few leagues. Crucible wasn't amazing either, but... The game we have now is pretty good. Like, MF is a bit shit. I think they, I think they in some essence knew what would happen. And a lot of it was like, play testing for PoE 2. But, you know, where we need to get to is stop beta testing for PoE 2. And I feel like this is what this league is. It's, PoE is its own league now, finally. Yeah, that's it. So, you know, poke, Pokeball League. They they do learn and they do fix it pretty quickly. At least at least they take notes. But like Blizzard, they don't even care. Yeah, that's true. Look, I I, I for as many bad leagues you know, that might have existed in the past of POE, still you can't, I come back to the fact that it's a really good game. And at least the devs listen to the community. Like, of all, of all community devs, they're probably one of the best and most engaged with the community. Well, that's it. Like, you know, and I think that's one thing they need to stop doing now is just leave, leave the two games separate as they wanted to. And stop testing POE 2 stuff in POE 1. I do agree that, that, that we're sort of done with that now, so. Yeah, it's true. I've never been a... I'm, I'm not a fan of, um, of Torchlight Infinite, but it, yeah, I can respect that. That's pretty cool, actually. I like that. And that's, like, if you want to do games as a service, that's where, what you have to do. And this is why Blizzard is so unsuccessful, because they don't have that. Still a profit drive, and I just don't seem to understand their audience. Yeah, PoE is like a very deep game, like, and I can understand, like, I'm lucky I started playing like 10 years ago, because I can understand a new player just being completely daunted by how crazy it looks from the outside. But once you get to learn it and know it, it's a really good game. Yeah, Bl Blizzard has lost what made Blizzard really good, like, if you listen to like the story of D2, right? Like, how they had to get a tech trial running for, what was it, um, Gamescom or whatever, and, like, it was a smaller company, and Blizzard North was, like, you know, on the edge just trying to figure out something new and interesting and exciting, and they were all passionate about the project and gave a damn, and it was just a very different place, but that's not what Blizzard is today. Today, Blizzard is just a monolith that churns out crap and looks for monetization structures. Yeah, that's it. But the plus side is because there's so much crap to learn, at least, like, you're not going to run out of stuff to do. Like, that's the plus side. Arguably, there's too much, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. That's it. That, But that's a different type of profit drive. That's like, they put the game out for free and say, here, try our product. If you want to give us money, 
you know, you can buy some MTXs or whatever later down the track. And that that's a plus. You get to play the whole campaign and everything else without ever... Like, some people haven't ever spent a cent on the game, still, to this day. I think that, yeah, and it's one of the true actual games as a service business models that are, that's actually, exactly. And then you, you see the argument where, oh, stash tabs are pay to win. Stash tabs are not pay to win. But yeah, basically, yeah, you could argue it. It's, it's similar to selling, yeah, you know what. But <laughs> I never thought about it like that. But that, but... Also, getting them hooked to try it for free means that you're not losing money by playing the game. Like, you don't feel, you don't get buyer's remorse and be like, oh, well, this is rubbish. Why did I spend my money on this? Exactly. It's, it's like, a, it's a try, it's like the old try before you buy scenario. And if you like it, put money in it. If you don't, well, don't put money in it. Like, Exactly, like, you know, let, let's look at D4. Before you even get out the gate, in Australia, right, it's 120 to 140 bucks, right? Before you even get out the gate, and you don't know what to expect out of the game, period. It's either going to be good or bad. So we are going to use a 1C ring on this build. Nah, look, I, I think, like, I always hoped for a game like PoE when I was younger. And obviously played a lot of different variations of a lot of things. But I think the game that we got is pretty good. I can do this build for 20 div. Exactly. Coven. The other thing with like POE, right? So like for years, I always tried to like get something working when I was getting the channel started. So I don't have anything bad to say for something that, you know, gave me the ability to do what I'm doing right here. So I, I appreciate the game quite a lot. And to be honest with you, like in my worst days where I've had, you know, my ups and downs in life, at least I had this game. I was able to come back to something that kept me going, you know. Which sounds crazy, but sometimes, you know, the smallest, simplest thing is how you get through some of the worst parts in your life, and yeah. That's it. Like, you know, you have a, a good community of people, like, and that, that's, that's what, that, that's where I think the real value of the game is these days. It's like, it's good gameplay, you know, there's a lot to learn, but there's a good community behind it. And, um, yeah. I can't say that about Diablo 3 or any other, like, D2 was probably the only other game when I was at uni and broke. I had D2 at a battle chest when that was a thing.
I actually still remember the character I was playing while I was going through a pretty bad breakup. <laughs> Which was a long time ago now. But that was the old Discharge um, Inquisitor. Man, that was a long time ago though. Far out. Uh, have you got mage blood? Because that's going to be how you're going to do it. Um, and basically you just got to stay out of his beam rays. But yeah, you need, um, you need all the elemental flasks on. So your ruby, sapphire, and your topaz. And that's basically how you tank the hits. Yeah, so just have that, uh, have your ruby, topaz, and sapphire. And that's what got me to killing him. Because he does like some weird elemental shit and you need to stay out of the beams. And then basically run around the outside of the map. I still die like one or two times each run when I do Shaper, Uber Shaper. It's just a really bad fight for that particular build. No worries, man. Oh, I'm really getting into this build. This is good fun. I need to allocate skill points, too. because I want to. <laughs> that's, that's basically the answer. Yeah, I could play Pen and Spren just like every other creator. Um, or I could do something cool and interesting and play Stormbrand. Of, uh, of uh, what are, what should we call? Indecision. That's basically my answer. I don't have any other particular motive to why I'm doing it. Just because I felt like it. <laughs> Like, the build will still work the same on... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just wanted to make a powerful Stormbrand character that probably won't get nerfed next league, so... So far, so good. Oh, I forgot. I can put Tinger on this build. Why would you do that? Like, why would you do that? I gotta get faster casting onto my uh, winter to uh, onto my wintry blast.
Oh, wrong. No. I goofed. Oh, cheers, man. Don't worry, I have no intention of going anywhere. If anything, I'm gonna be working hard as fuck when PoE 2 comes out. And then, um, I'll be smash- I still intend to smash out PoE 1 content as well in the- once the league and PoE 2 gets like two months in, then I'll be going on the, um, PoE 1 league. Then we got TQ2, Last Epoch, I might do some stuff on. The channel will be here for a very long time. Which is awesome. Favorite thing to do on a Saturday. Definitely need rune binder. But that's pretty good damage. It's respectable damage actually. Come on, piety. Yeah, thing is crossed, man. Or assassin. Assassin's been a bit forgotten about too. But yeah, well, the only thing you can really play on Gladiator now is just straight up bleed builds. I miss playing like max block builds. Like it wants you to use versatile combatant, which Gladiator is already too weak as it is to run that. He's getting constantly critted now. Oh yeah? That's awesome. It's a powerful build.
Yeah, it's true, yeah. We could do that. Best thing about this is you just have to sit here and cut. Hit one cast, it attaches, see you later. Yeah, it's not the same though, like you used to be able to play like lacerate, max block like it was nothing. Nah, I never showcased it, I tried it and it was just... It used the annihilating light. Like, you could get it up to like 160, 170 mil. But the problem is, you couldn't survive. And I just don't see the point of builds where it's like, if you get like hit with a strong wind that you just fall over. Like, to me, that's just not a great way to play the game. Not my, not my playstyle, I guess. I need to be powerful. Oh yeah, I think but in the end I got to 92. Some people are over 100 with a better wand and whatnot. This is absolutely exceeding expectations. Look at those crits. Basically a hundred percent crit already. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yep, does the job. Done, not even hard. Yep. Yeah, some of the bullshit this league is pretty crazy. That doesn't affect the storm brand there. Draven Secret, what level can I use that? 56. Hmm. So this will just absolutely destroy everything there. Yeah, like it can rip a 900 Crystal King with pretty much, pretty well, you know, pretty easily. But yeah, struggles with juiced mobs. Pretty crazy.
Then we gotta go the other way. I need to get room binder into the build. Yeah, I tried it. I just don't like magic finding. Yeah, I find it really tedious. I've never been a fan of like builds like that. And like er when every man and his dog does it too, like, do we really want to jump into a stream and watch someone spend 10 hours trying like do a map? Like, it's not very interesting to watch, to be honest with you, except for that few seconds where you get the endorphin hit from the loot explosion, that's about it. I could do cracklands on this too, actually. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean, man. Alright, we'll switch out to that shield. I don't know, there's more fun ways to play the game. Oh. Oh, yeah, okay. That would make leveling a lot easier. As an ass. Let's run that. Could potentially use a precursor in this build too. Yeah, exactly, man. Like, that's profitable enough. Yeah, pretty much. That's the way that I felt about it too. I was like, uh, not exactly very exciting. I'd rather be fighting Crystal Kings and like hard ass bosses or tech slamming through a map with an interesting build. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's it's pure coke. Pure coke. That's right, next league it'll be like, Oh, you shouldn't have taken away the magic fine. The magic fine made the game great. It's gonna be twenty thousand excuses when they can't map juice.
Yeah, I'd say so too. I'd say so too. Because they'd be like, oh, you mean to tell me we got to do play the game? Like, god damn it. Yep. Hey, you are exactly right, man. You're exactly right. And we'll all be sitting here going, ah, oh, we'll just delve. That's fine. <laughs> That's what we were doing last league. <laughs> Yeah, that's it, man. Delve B Profits. It's true, it is juicing up the price of everything in Delve because there's less people delving. But it's the same with like, you know, Uber's Original Sin. All the farmers for all that content are all MFing right now. They up to 120C. They're only 60C the last time I checked. That's insane. Jesus Christ. Like every splinter would be like, what, 0.3 of a C or something like that? 0.4, 0 0.5? It's pretty damn good. Yeah, 95 C a hit. Bam, straight away. 2 to 1 div, more or less. Yeah, diamond flask. They're like, what, 25C are perfect? That's insane. And you can get them so early on as well in Delve. One socket resonators, 3C, 10C for three sockets, up to 15C you can sell them for. Yeah. do need is that and then rune binder might have to level that up to get rune binder rune binder doubles my damage nice <laughs> i uh i've had a, so many messages from people about like it's my first league that they've ever been able to get a mage blood not necessarily specifically because of the price, but because learning Delve has been pretty profitable. I, find, I just reckon that's awesome. Like, and, and that's what it's down by. It's a mechanic that for, you know, any player, you know, no matter what skill set, you can make profit. Oh, yeah. Liches are worthless. <laughs> Oh yeah, you'll find my man, don't worry. 
I've killed, what, 29 kings this league? So... Yep. Starting to see other creators copy and suit now too, which I found interesting. So yeah. You get the next league and everyone will be putting out a fucking Delve video. Yep. Yep. You just basically sprint through Delve, yeah. It's Mage Blood is like this is what we say, Mage Blood is a build fixer. Like it is a very powerful item. And in some cases, pure enabling of builds. So it's usually like the first thing you farm for. Oh yeah, the tendies. That's it, man. You just keep going hard on the farm and yeah, you get it. The only thing I hope is they stay as as affordable as what they are now, but they probably won't. But then, the, you know, the cards make it, the Valdos boxes make a big difference in that. I think it's just, be, it goes beyond just MF. It's the Valdos boxes were a really good add to the game. I got a mage blood head on off. I technically had two mage bloods this league. So many people live streaming PoE, eh? Crazy. I need to upgrade my wand. This build absolutely slaps. Skill is really powerful.
So the next upgrade we need is Rune Binder. Got to put two brands on things and absolutely murder everything. <laughs> that sucks, man. <laughs> They'll take 10 years to kill. It's literally the two stats of that F this build up or any build that I've put together. Shock resistance, crit immune. Like, who thought of that? Seriously, who thought to put that into the game? It's an impossible mod, you can't beat that, like... Now, can I get... I should be able to get some flower symbols. Crit roll. Yeah, I'll take it, whatever. That's what it wants to give me, that's what I'll play with. damage right off. 48.64% crit already. That's pretty decent. That's respectable levels of crit. Oh yeah. Oh man, what am I doing? I gotta go to the breath query. Forgot. I forgot. Uh, ossuary.
cry. Yeah, this is pretty good, this skill. I like this. Got huge amounts of clear. Gotta go in through, probably come up through here. We actually do that there. Brand damage. Don't really need to do that though. Come on, wreck him. Pretty respectable. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's a non-brand that... It's a brand that's not going to get nerfed next league, man. <laughs> Penance is going to get absolutely nuked in the ner in the patch notes. No, it may not. But if that's the case, everybody will be bloody farming them out of lab in the first day. That was an easy act five. Oh, 
All right. So we've got work in the morning, so I've got to be a responsible adult. So let's find someone to stream raid. Who are we doing tonight? Actually, we got a burial ground farmer, eh? Try and find someone who's speaking the same language. You know what? Let's do this one. First ever stream. I like his music. All right, guys, we'll leave it there, but let's raid this guy. Always glitches when raiding these channels. Let's see. 